If you're having a dinner party and you're making a bit of an occasion out of it, well, you'll need a dessert that has that wow factor. My strawberry and pistachio meringue torte definitely delivers. Now, this also happens to be a gluten-free dessert because the cake is made out of a daquas, a nut meringue cake. I start with a third of a cup of shelled pistachios, and you wanna put that in a little food chopper or a food processor. I've measured out a cup of icing sugar, and I'm just going to sprinkle in half of it right now. The reason I pulse the nuts with the icing sugar is so the icing sugar can absorb the oils. A meringue is very fragile and it's sensitive to oil, so this sort of protects the pistachios from the meringue. This also prevents the pistachios from turning into pistachio butter. Now what I wanna do is tip this into my one cup plus two tablespoons or 100 grams of ground almonds. Even though I've got a combination of pistachio and ground almonds, the pistachio is the dominant flavor. It's so rich and buttery, but I have the almonds here to give the meringue structure and there's a bit of a cost factor involved too. Almonds are more affordable than pistachios. So now I'll add my remaining icing sugar and I just whisk this all together. You can see the subtle hue of the pistachio, but the color comes out as it bakes. If you were making a traditional cake, this would be the equivalent of sifting your dry ingredients. Now that that's looked after, I can take care of my egg whites. So I have five large egg whites at room temperature in my mixing bowl, and I'll add to that a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar is acidic in a powder form. If you don't have that, you could use a quarter teaspoon of white vinegar or lemon juice. And what that does is helps the egg whites expand to their fullest potential and hold in the volume of the air. I'll start by mixing this for a little bit until it's frothy, and then I'll slowly pour in my quarter cup of sugar. A quarter cup of sugar added to five egg whites is not a lot. And so when you're making a meringue with not a lot of sugar, it can be easy to over whip the whites. If you feel you've over whipped your egg whites, the fix is simple. Just walk away from them about 10, 15 minutes and those egg whites will start collapsing on themselves and you'll see a little liquid develop at the bottom. What you then do is re-whip the whites on medium speed to hit that point you missed the first time around. So now I'm going to add my ground nut and icing sugar mixture in two additions. I like to fold this by hand, pull from the bottom and lift over the ground nuts. And time is critical here. You don't want to be so slow and deliberate that your egg whites start collapsing. I'd rather you actually work a little faster, but still gently to get them worked in. And your first addition of nuts don't have to be fully incorporated before you add the second. You will feel the meringue starting to change as you fold it because that icing sugar is dissolving into the egg whites. Once you no longer see any dry mixture, you can put this in your pans now or if you wanna punch up that green color a little bit just a tiny addition of green food coloring. I have three eight inch pans that have been lightly greased, the bottoms and sides lined with parchment paper. Oh, and the last step. This is a fun little tip I figured out just recently. If you dust the tops of these cake layers, this doesn't work with other cake layers, just a daquoise or meringue tort. Dust it with a little icing sugar and sprinkle some pistachios on top it adds a little bit of extra crunch. These layers take 30 to 35 minutes at 325. And after they come out, I like to cool them in their pans completely before I remove the rings. Well, I'm whipping up my cream to get ready to assemble this strawberry and pistachio meringue torte. Now here are the meringue layers out of the oven. So I do like to cool them in their pan because they are fragile when they're warm, but then they're so easy to pop out. I peeled off the parchment. You can see, there is a bit of browning on the outside. This is not a conventional meringue that you want to keep light and white. It's a daquoise. It is supposed to brown, just the way a cake does. 
Now back to the whipped cream. In terms of picking a filling, I wanted its texture to match the lightness of the nut daquas, the meringue torte. So whipped cream with the fluffy meringue is a perfect fit. I have one and a half cups of whipping cream in here, and I'm just gonna whip it up a little more firmly, just past a medium. Heat. <laughs> There we go. Now that my whipped cream has some volume, I will add my third of a cup of icing sugar. And the key is to add a few ingredients to stabilize your whipped cream so you can assemble this torte before your dinner party guests arrive. This is creme fraiche. It is basically sour cream made from whipping cream. And because I've added the creme fraiche, this tightened, rich sour cream, by adding a tablespoon of lemon juice, these ingredients will work together to thicken and tighten the whipped cream so it'll hold every dollop and swish I give it. A teaspoon of vanilla, and I'll just blend this all together. Yeah, it's still very smooth and creamy. I've got my cream. I've got my daquas layers now. It's time for the fresh strawberries. So what I like to do to sweeten and also enhance the strawberry flavor is add some strawberry jam. It's already thickened. It'll add a beautiful shine. So I've got a quarter cup of strawberry jam, a bit for the berries on top, a bit for the berries in between, and just a quick stir. Because I have individual layers of daquas, there's no slicing required. You simply stack and layer. When assembling a daquas style torte like this, as it sits in the fridge, the cream does soften up the meringue a little bit, but it doesn't make it soggy, nor does it fall apart because of all those ground nuts in there. The daquas is very stable and you'll find you get beautiful clean slices of your cake. Last layer goes on top. Dollop of cream for the center. Because I have this beautiful pistachio daquas, I don't want to hide it, so I'm just going to spread it a little bit. The finishing touch is a dusting of icing sugar, but don't do this before you put your torte in the fridge because the icing sugar will dissolve. You want to dust it right before you bring it to the table, and it can just be on the daquas itself. It's pretty, it's elegant, this strawberry and pistachio meringue torte is one of those ta-da moments. And you feel as good about making it as you do about serving it. I know your dinner party guests are going to love it.